Good day. And welcome to music online class. Today, we are going to focus on your quarter four module slash week one. This is about the musical theater and festivals of Asia focusing on Japanese, Chinese and Indonesian theater. Let us begin. Let us begin with Japanese theater. This one is called Kabuki. Kabuki is a classical and much loved form of drama featuring gorgeous costumes, outlandish makeup, and exaggerated movements. It originated in the early 17th century. It's said to have evolved from flamboyant dances performed by a woman named Izumono Okuni. However, the shogunate soon prohibited women from performing on the stage, stating that their sensual dances corrupted public morals. As a result, kabuki performances became plot-driven, and the unique tradition of male actors playing female roles came about at that time as a way to get around the restrictions imposed by the shogunate. One of the hallmarks of kabuki is the use of makeup to indicate each character's personality. This is a famous play about the Soga brothers, and their encounter with the man who killed their father. The type of white makeup worn by the actor playing the older brother, Juro, tells us he is gentle and good natured. On the other hand, we know from this over the top makeup featuring bold red lines that his younger brother, Goro, is quick tempered. This style of makeup, called Kumadori, uses lines in one of three basic colors. Red symbolizes strength and a sense of justice. Blue means evil, so it's used for villains. And brown is used for a wide variety of supernatural beings. The hot-blooded younger brother and the sensible older brother. In Kabuki, makeup clearly indicates the type of character being portrayed. The memorable poses struck by actors at significant moments called mie are another hallmark of kabuki. Executing a mie involves three steps. First, the actor spreads his legs wide apart and positions his body in the way that is most visible to the audience. He then wiggles his head to draw the audience's attention to his face. Finally, he moves his eyes in an exaggerated manner and then freezes. Because a mie is done in these steps, it creates a dramatic effect. It's not unlike a zoom shot in film and television. In Kabuki, various storytelling techniques have been developed to engage the audience's interest. Today, they are all regarded as unique artistic conventions. Japan is rich in culture and tradition. No and Kabuki are unique and genuine expressions of the Japanese spirit and culture. They mirror taste and ideals of different social classes in profoundly different environments and periods. Elements of No and Kabuki Sakura one of the popular traditional songs of Japan that produces distinct characteristics used in the Asian style of making melodies also known as the pentatonic scale. Do you still remember the Sakura song from Quarter 2? Ipan Choshi Continuous pattern used in speeches building up to an explosive climax in an Aragotu style. It requires an extraordinary breath control. Nori or Jururi implies a very sensitive capacity of writing the rhythms of the shamisen, string instruments, declaiming each accompaniment. Yakoharai 
describes the subtle delivery of poetical text written in the Japanese metrical form of alternating seven and five syllables. Nagata the Long Song The most popular shamisen music is dance music for the henge mono, or quick change pieces. It is very flexible, can be performed by one shamisen, or by an entire orchestra of 20 musicians. Now let us watch the Chinese Peking Opera. Peking Opera is recognized as China's national opera. Based on Pi Huang tunes, it incorporates various Chinese opera formats, including Kun Chu Opera. In the mid 19th century, the coalescent performing art of Peking Opera which integrates singing, reciting, dancing and martial arts, finally came into being. One milestone on this path was the entry of the four great Anhui troops into Beijing in 1790. Peking Opera has well-established standards and forms for its music, script, performance and stage design. It can be performed in various rhythms, such as free rhythm, adagio, moderato, allegro, and smooth rhythm. Major accompanying instruments for Wan Chang or non-martial plays are strings like Jinghu, Yuexin, and Xianzi, supplemented by pipes like Suona and Dizi. In contrast, percussion instruments, including Bangu, Daluo, Xiaoluo, and Naobo, are used for Wu Chang or plays which have a martial theme. Rhyme is of great importance in the singing and reciting of Peking opera. There exists a strict set of rules of libretto composition based on the official language of the Ming and Qing dynasties and the Beijing dialect. The performance of Peking opera is characterized by its exaggerated and symbolic style. Transition in time and space can be freely yet fully represented by the performance, the costumes, the props and the music. Costume and headdress are both delicate yet also flamboyant. Facial makeup highlights the character's personality and social identity with exaggerated symbols, patterns and colors. Peking Opera features four major types of performers, namely the Shang, the main male role, Dan, any female role, Jing, the painted face male role, and Chou, the male clown role. These, in turn, can be further divided into subtypes based on age and profession. Singing and dancing are equally important for Peking Opera. Performers have to follow the established format of movements of hands, eyes, body and feet, as well as integrating their own feelings. There are over 30 schools of Peking Opera and repertoires of each are still being performed today.
performance style named after Mei Lanfang, the founder of the Mei School of Peking Opera, is regarded as the most representative of China's opera performance styles. Tradition and innovation are both highly valued. Today, Peking opera is still being passed down from generation to generation by oral teaching, which inspires true understanding within. Many young people are trained by their elder relatives at home or by teachers at school. There are over 3,000 Peking opera plays, about 400 of which are still regularly staged. They tell stories about history and social and family life. Being informative and entertaining, Peking opera is enjoyed by people of all social classes. As the torchbearers and practitioners of the art, China's Peking opera troops are continuously collecting traditional plays and compiling new ones, all the while enriching content and performance techniques. Social awareness of the art has been raised through tours, on-campus shows and international exchanges. Peking opera is performed not only on the stage, but also in parks, backyards and living rooms. And of course, there are audio and video recordings. Peking opera is an integral part of life for a large number of amateur performers and fans. The general public has greatly contributed to its inheritance and development. Peking opera has become a cultural bond linking Chinese people both at home and abroad. It helps to strengthen cultural identity. Peking opera can enhance world cultural diversity and promote the public's understanding of traditional culture and its respect for classic art. The Peking Opera Steering Committee has been established by China's Ministry of Culture to safeguard Peking Opera with supportive policies. In recent years, over 500 hours of selected videos of China's Peking Opera have been recorded and published, where the essence of traditional Peking Opera has been comprehensively documented. In 2006, Peking Opera was included amongst the first group of national intangible cultural heritage to be listed. By 2008, 15 Peking Opera arias had been included in the textbooks for elementary and high school students by China's Ministry of Education. Peking Opera, a precious heritage and classic art form, represents the highest level of traditional Chinese operas and expresses the aesthetic ideals of the Chinese nation. It is a precious, intangible cultural heritage of all humanity. Chinese Theater Chinese theater traditionally was considered as the highest form of arts in China. Peking Opera A stylized Chinese form of opera in which speech, singing, mime, and acrobatics are performed to an instrumental accompaniment. One of the elements of Chinese Peking Opera is Fan Pan. Commonly used for sorrowful songs, and is only sung by bearded characters. Another element is Taylo, Siaglo. 
a small and large gong and symbols that each performance in Peking Opera begins with. Another Asian theater is the Indonesian Wayang Kulit. Renowned for its elaborate puppets and complex musical styles, the ancient Wayang form of storytelling originated on the Indonesian island of Java. For ten centuries, Wayang flourished at the royal courts of Java and Bali, as well as in rural areas. Today, Wayang is practiced not only on Java and Bali, but also on the islands of Lombok, Madura, Sumatra and Borneo, where various local performance styles and musical accompaniments have developed. Wayang performances are visually striking, owing mainly to the puppets themselves. Although these carefully handcrafted objects vary considerably in size, shape and style, two principal types prevail. The three-dimensional wooden puppet, Wayang Klitik or Gole, and the flat leather shadow puppet, Wayang Kulit, projected in front of a screen lit from behind. Both types are characterized by stylized costumes and facial features and articulated body parts. The master puppeteer, or Dalang, carefully manipulates the swiveling arms by means of slender sticks attached to the puppets. In the past, puppeteers were regarded as cultivated literary experts who transmitted philosophical, moral and aesthetic values through their art. The words and actions of comic characters representing the common man have provided an acceptable vehicle for criticizing sensitive social and political issues. And it is believed that this special role may have contributed to Wayang's survival over the centuries. Wayang stories borrow characters from indigenous myths and ancient Indian epics, while heroes from famous Persian tales feature prominently in the distinctive narrative styles developed in Java and Lombok. Spectators of all ages are passionate about the performance. Sama, one of the most popular figures, and the wise counsellor of the king and lords comes on stage. A choir accompanies the performance with its singing. Samar crosses the stage. Samar is an important figure present in all performances. The music helps to create different atmospheres appropriate for each scene. Thanks to his master's skills, Karang is able to dance to the rhythm of the orchestra, which is conducted by the Dalang, using a little bell and a small drum. The Korokora demon and Vishnu come on stage. Ramawiyaya gets ready to shoot the magic arrow. The spectators are enthralled. The Raro demon is hit by the arrow. Oh, 
Wijaya. Aku mau mati. Yo, hey, aku tulung orang, aku orang mati. Aku mau mati. Oh, hey, aku orang mati. Surat Hiro Jaya ningrat lebur di nimpangas tu. Wayang Kulit is an Indonesian shadow puppet theater. Performed in royal court and widely performed in public on religious occasions, so that knowledge of Wayang became widespread among all classes in Java. Wayang Oldest continuous traditions of storytelling in the world which includes the use of puppet materials and background musical accompaniment to make it interesting to the audience. An Indonesian and Malay word for theater. Dalong sings the mood songs, Suluk, at a regular interval during performance. Gamelan ensembles comprised mainly of bronze percussion instruments augmented by other percussion instruments, strings, and a flute. Lesson 2 this is about the classification of instruments. Hornbastel satch. Sounds are produced from any vibrating objects. A device that is used to make musical sounds is called musical instruments. According to Hornbastel, ethnomusicologist, and satch, musicologist, generally, there are four types of musical instruments. Classifications of instruments Aerophone These are the instruments that produce sound primarily by causing a body of air to vibrate. Chordophone These are the musical instruments that make sound by way of a vibrating string or string stretched between two points. Idiophone the vibrating element is the body of the instrument itself. Membranophone The vibrating element is a membrane or skin. Electrophone Any instruments that uses electricity. That's all for today. Thank you.